As fall approaches, are you ready to try something new? Maybe make some new friends here at Narden Park? Or, or perhaps you're yearning for something and you can't quite name what that thing is. Hi, I'm, I'm Pastor Lynn, and today I'm going to introduce you to some pretty interesting people. People who are helping to lead some of the small groups here at Narden Park. This might be the perfect opportunity for you to check out some of the ways that you can grow in faith and you just might form some lasting friendships. You know, some of our small groups have been around at Narden Park for many years and some actually quite a lot. We've added just over the last year and a half. So I'm going to invite uh, our folks uh, when, when they share the first time to be sure and, and tell us their name and which, uh, which group they want to talk about right then. Uh, but we just want you to know who we are and we want you to know that you're invited. So uh, would anyone like to share with us uh, something about what you've discovered about being in a small group that made you feel like it was uh, important to you to want to be in a group. Anybody got something? I can. Uh, I'm Amy Dowell, and Christine and I facilitate the caregivers group. And um, we've used that term uh, loosely. Um, some of us are caring for children, some of us have cared for parents, some have cared for um, others in our lives, for spouses. Um, so we use that term loosely, um, but we've gathered together as a group um, supporting each other so that we can then care better for the folks in our lives that we love. Um, speaking for the group, I've seen um, just growth and development. Um, we've gone from a group of people that see each other passing in the hall or seeing on a, now on another Zoom call um, to really knowing a little bit about the uh, people's situation and background and able to dive a little deeper, not just into, hey, how are you? Good, fine, to really deep down into more of the Wesley question of how is it with your soul and getting deep down into how can we help support each other as a community. Yeah, and I, I like that too, Amy, that we support each other because you can come with something that you want to share, but then you are also helping the other people in your group and, and just come away from it, you know, having given and also received and, and made that connection. And so Christine, not judgmental listening. None of us have the answers, but we're there and we can support and we can be with each other. Right. Um, and that I think of this time of shutdown and with COVID, this is even more important. Um, a lot of caregivers are isolated and out there and don't have the general community support. Um, so a little plug, um, we're looking to revamp and find a new time that works for us. Um, previously we had met on Sunday after church um, and we're looking, we're exploring new times, possibly an evening once um, life kind of shuts down and it's a little quieter. Um, but if you're at all interested, talk to Pastor Lynn, um, and we're open at this point, point to finding new members, new people interested, and also a new time that would work for all of us. Great. Thank you, Amy and Christine. Um, who else you know, so, has some things they'd like to share along those lines? Uh, I'll, I'll be glad to share, too. So, uh, this is Wes Brunn, um, retired Methodist clergy, but affiliated with Narden. Um, support comes in a variety of forms. And um, I'm a part of two or three groups at Narden. Um, one group that meets on Tuesdays at one o'clock is called Maturing in Faith. It's a group that started uh, when we first started these small group discussion groups. And it's designed, um, it's led primarily by Marshall Dunlap and by Bob Docking. Um, and it's designed to give us a chance to reflect on the Sunday sermon that we heard in church. Um, and usually that's a jumping off place because there are, it leads to a, a, a much richer discussion about 
whatever else that sermon connects us with about living our lives. And there's a certain kind of support that comes from being in a group like that, where we share how we experience the, the sermon, how we experience life itself, and how this sermon might apply to us. Um, I'm, I'm also a part of a, a group of men that meet on Saturday mornings. We meet from 10 to 11.30. It's a, also a book study. Um, but again, the books that we read are challenging books. These are books that stretch us and cause us to um, think more deeply about our faith and what we're committed to. And we're just about to start a new study this coming Saturday, uh, led by Al Knappenberger. It's a, a book by uh, Bishop John Shelby Spong, an Episcopal bishop, a somewhat controversial man. Uh, and it's a book called Unbelievable. And it's a, kind of a, a re-examination of faith in contemporary language. How, how do we put our faith into language that makes sense for us today? And uh, there's a third group that I'm a part of as well. Um, and uh, I, I, I just find small groups uh, uh, as an occasion for sharing with other people. You know, I'm somewhat, as an older adult, I'm somewhat isolated. So the Zoom connection helps keep me connected to the community. And I think that's a really valuable piece. I'm in one of the groups with Wes and that meets on, on Mondays. I think it's um, the first and third Monday, one yes. uh, thirty, and it's on current events. And so we talk about different current events that might be going on and how it affects our faith and what we're looking at. Um, one of the ones coming up we're going to look at is on elder care. And I mean, that's really important considering everything we've been going through with COVID is how do we care for our elders in the kind of situations that we've been going through. Um, the other group that I'm in is a little more um, active and it's a, a Stitches of Love group. And so there's some ladies that get together and in October we'll be meeting on Zoom. So we meet in our own homes and we work in our projects, but as we knit, we talk about what's going on in our lives and we talk about the sermon on Sunday and how we can live it out during the week. And the bonus is that we make prayer shawls. We make lap, they call lap gans or lap robes. And we make fleece blankets that we crochet around the edges. And these can go out to anybody in our community it doesn't have to be someone from our church that might just need a little reminder of the warmth of God's love and that somebody's thinking about them. So if you have someone that you think would like one of these um, pieces, let Pastor Lynn know and she'll connect with us and we'll get one delivered to, the, to you to take to them or we can deliver it to their home. We leave it on the front porch, ring the doorbell and step away so that there's no contact but we pray over these pieces as they're made so that the person knows that the love of God is coming with this and that they're wrapped in the love of God. And it also gives us time to gossip and chat and study and talk and just be in communion with other women or men if they want to join too. It's nice to see a face and nice to meet new people and bond over something that we love like knitting or crocheting. What, what about the, uh, the, the women's uh, book group, Arlene? Is there anything you'd like to tell us about that? Sure. My name is Arlene Marks, and I facilitate the women's book group, study group, whatever we're into at, the, at that moment. Um, when we're meeting in church, we actually use mixed media. Sometimes we watch a film, or uh, we'll bring in newspaper articles, um, hopefully to address social issues. And um, it's a very lovely group of about eight to 10 women. And we have gotten really, really very close to each other personally. Um, some folks have had tragedies and, you know, we're able to share. And we kind of we laugh because we say, you know, we treat this group like the Las Vegas group. You know, what happens in our group stays in our group. And we all know that if we need help, that we're there for each other and that 
it will not go outside of the room. Mm -hmm. We're still meeting outside at church under one of those lovely big trees uh, at, at the end of the parking lot. And some gals bring a lunch or a yogurt or a drink or something. Um, we're meeting at 11 o'clock currently. And we've discovered that at 12 o'clock, if we're not finished, the bells go off in the church. And so we're like, oh my goodness, I wanted to say something, but now the church bells are ringing. But now we realize how comforting it is to hear those bells. And we really enjoy it, even though we have to maybe speak a little louder, but um, um, it's kind of a, a meditation for us. And anybody's welcome. We read all different kinds of material and we're always open to suggestions. Okay. Thank you. And what, uh, what about uh, that current events group, Wes? It's, what do you call that group that, that you're getting ready to restart? It's the one Dorothy was talking about, Faith and Current Events. Okay. <clears throat> and um, like she said, <clears throat> we look at contemporary issues. <clears throat> These are things that you're likely to read in the newspaper. I mean, they're, they're that current and uh, that uh, significant. Um, and we try to see how our faith applies in those situations. How do we live out our faith in the context of contemporary society? And um, like Dorothy said, we're starting a, a study. This particular, this is not, actually it's what, oh, two weeks from Monday, I guess, the 21st. Right. Um, on elder care, mm -hmm. looking at the function of older people and mm -hmm. how we care for each other and in our society. But there's a whole host of topics that we're going to be considering when we meet on the 21st, where we go next. I mean, we pick a topic each time and we talk about it. Um, and what I should say about all of the groups that I'm a part of, <clears throat> they consist of both single people and couples. Uh, there's nothing that says you have to be this or that. You can be who you are. And uh, and we also all sort of look after each other and try to grow together, uh, regardless of our status and standing and so forth. Well, one group that, that I'm part of uh, is called the Prayer Space, and it's brand new. It's only been going for maybe six weeks, but we meet at uh, noon on Wednesdays, uh, and it's not even, it's less than an hour, uh, but during that time, we learn about a new and different way to pray, and we practice it, and we tape it to make devotions for others in the church that they could learn the prayer practice and they could listen to it anytime. And then after we stop recording, we have a private prayer time that builds off of what we just learned about. So uh, it's an easy way for people to uh, join us at noon and you can do it from your, in fact, we have two of our people are literally at work uh, and they just tune in and they know they can trust us to only be 15 minutes that they need to be there, uh, maybe 20 at the most. Um, and it, it's, it's just a, it's a good group and we would love to have people join us or watch the devotionals. You can find them on the website. Uh, so I wanted to tell about that one. And then we have a, uh, another new group called Connected Faith, and uh, Rachel Kane is leading it, but she's not with us tonight. But two members of the group are here, so I don't know. Do, would one of you like to tell a, a little bit about that one? Sure. Um, so I'm Christine Scoble again. Um, <clears throat> so we use a, a materials called Connected Faith. It's, a, it's an app you can get on your phone. Um, we meet Mondays at 8 o'clock. And um, 8 p.m., right? 8 p.m. Yes, 8 p.m. <laughs> um, and we do a Zoom meeting. Um, but it's, it's a lesson that's based on a piece of scripture. And there's a video that goes with it. And we have some really good um, in-depth discussions. And then it, it always ends with a spiritual practice that we, that we talk about and, and, and aim to practice during the week. So um, that's a good group. And we're very open. We, we just started a study um, 
and they run about five weeks, would you say, Amy, usually? So, um, but there's no, I mean, there's no reason you couldn't join in the middle, and, but, but that's, that's how it works. So we've told you about some of the groups. We have not at all covered all of them, but we wanted to give you a flavor of them. Uh, and we hope that you will know that these groups are for you and we'd love to have you be part of it. Um, we'd like to close with prayer and I'd like to invite um, Reverend Dr. Uh, Wes Brun to close us in prayer. Uh, let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for the opportunity we have to be a part of a community of faith like Narden that is interested, so interested in knowing your word and trying to find ways to apply it to our lives. We try to live the faith as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. And these groups that we are a part of strengthen us in that walk. We give thanks for the leaders of these groups, the people that give themselves and their time and their thought processes and their spiritual gifts to lead us in this time, to these times together. And God, we, we know that you are a God of hospitality, that you welcome all people and searchers as well as strong believers. And we invite people, regardless of their standing in relation to you, if they're interested in searching out and knowing about you more and more and what life lived in your spirit is like we invite them to join with us in this in this pilgrimage we give you thanks oh god for each other for this faith group and for our time together and we ask these things in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen amen so if we if we've tweaked your interest if you'd like to know more you can simply contact the church and uh, and ask to be connected with Pastor Lynn, and I'll do the rest to help you to find your way into a group. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know how to Zoom, I am a Zoom teacher now, and I'll help you. <laughs> we really would love to have you join us. Thank <clears throat> you so much for being with us tonight. Bye-bye. <laughs>